Today is going to be a really challenging day for me because I'm going to explain to you one of the most exciting but also like completely overlooked and underrated features of Betaflight 4.1, Dynamic Idle. And as simple as Dynamic Idle seems like it ought to be, explaining what it does actually requires us to delve into some pretty deep concepts about how a quadcopter flies and figuring out how best to tune it. <sighs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Here's how this video is going to go down. I'm going to tell you all about what Dynamic Idle is and what benefits it provides and how it works. And we're going to go into a pretty deep discussion about quadcopter, aerodynamics, dynamics, motors, etc. And we're going to do that because I know a lot of you guys love that and I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do is to communicate that stuff. But some of you guys are going to get bored. Some of you guys are already bored. And you just want to, like, okay, I, I'm sold. Dynamic Idle is good. How do I set it up? Timestamp in the lower corner of the screen. If you want to skip ahead, you can skip to that timestamp to get to the, get past the theory and into the implementation. But let's get into the theory. And in order to get into theory, I have to give a big, big thanks to some people who helped me understand this better. A little, little confession. I, people think, oh, Bardwell, he's so smart. I'm really not. Somebody out, somewhere out there, a hater is putting that on loop. <laughs> the real smart guys are the guys who are actually doing the development. And I just kind of sit in the room with them and look around and listen and soak it all up. And then my talent is that I kind of communicate it in a way that seems like more people can understand. But the real smart guys helped me understand this and I owe them a huge debt Guys like Joe Lucid, who I think is the main Betaflight developer who worked on this feature. Chris Thompson, who is a real expert at black box logging and tuning, who helped talk about this with me. Uh, Daniel Apple, or Appel, depending on how you say your last name, Daniel. And a fellow named Quad66, who made a video explaining all this. He has like 200 subscribers. He made a video about this. And I was half tempted to just go, I'd just go watch his video. But I kind of wanted to put my own spin on it. I'll link Quad66's video down in the video description. It's the least I could do. Okay, so dynamic idle. Let's back up and talk about idle speed. Why do we have an idle speed? You know, in the configuration tab, the digital idle percent or idle percent, what's the purpose of that? In order to answer that, I want you to think about what happens if you go to the Betaflight Motors tab and you just raise the slider slowly. When the throttle is just barely raised, the motor will kind of twitch and begin to spin, but not spin smoothly. And that effect is even more pronounced when you're in flight, because right now there's no prop on the motor. There's no air pushing against a prop. The motor doesn't have any resistance to overcome. If I squeeze the motor just a little with my fingers, that effect will become more pronounced. So I have to get that slider up past a certain point where it can overcome the resistance of the air and everything and keep the motor spinning. And the goal of the idle value is to make sure that that throttle signal between the flight controller and the ECC stays high enough that the motor never stalls or stutters in flight. And if it does that, you'll get what they call a death roll. The quad will just go It usually doesn't recover, although it theoretically could. It'll just spin into the ground. Now, in order to understand a problem with the idle value, what we're going to do here is we are going to imagine a two-dimensional quadcopter. So we've got two motors here with propellers on them, right? That's, there you go, that's how you do it. We've got two motors here with propellers on them, and there is a center of mass, and there's a PID controller, and the PID controller is going to try to make this quadcopter do whatever we tell it to do. So let's imagine that we raise the throttle. Well, both of these motors are going to spin up roughly proportional to each other, and the quadcopter will ascend. If we lower the throttle, the motors will slow down. And if we input a, a rotation, if you think about it, what will happen is that one motor will speed up, one motor will slow down, 
and the net effect will be a rotation around the center of mass. Now let's think about what will happen in this situation if this downspinning motor has an idle speed limit that prevents it from going down as far as it wants to go. In fact, let's imagine a scenario where this motor is already spinning at its idle speed and it cannot go any lower. In that situation, we can still affect a rotation around the center of mass simply by speeding this motor up even more, right? The relative difference in thrust between these two motors is what will affect the rotation. And we can achieve that difference in thrust by speeding this motor up a little and slowing this motor down a lot, or by leaving this motor at the same speed and speeding this motor up proportionally even more. And that is the problem with the static idle percent that we currently use, that most people are currently using. Because it means that when one motor is at the idle percent and cannot go any lower, the only way to affect certain types of rotations or, or any rotation of the quadcopter is to speed up some of the other motors and create a, a proportional difference in thrust between them. And that's a problem. In fact, that's why when you activate air mode, you ever notice that if you have air mode on a switch and you activate air mode after arming the quad, the motors will go from they'll speed up. And you may wonder why that is. The reason why that is is that when you activate air mode, the PID controller becomes more aggressive. It becomes more authoritative. And it's trying harder to stabilize the quad. And what it needs to do is make some of the motors slow down and some of the motors speed up. But since none of the motors are ever allowed to go below the idle value, the only thing it can do is speed some of the motors up and they have to speed up proportionally more. So that, this is the problem that dynamic idle solves. Because here's the reality of the situation. The idle speed that makes for the best flying quadcopter is usually significantly higher than the absolute minimum stall point. So we'll call that stall. That's the point where the motor stalls, you get a desync and the quad death rolls to the ground, you, you crash. The idle speed is generally significantly higher than the stall speed. And that means that there is a window in here where the motor could be allowed to go below the idle speed under circumstances where the PID controller demands it. Now some of you guys out there are freestyle pilots who are running the absolute lowest idle speed that you could possibly get, 2%, 2.5%. Some people out there lower their idle speed until the quad starts to death roll and then they raise their idle speed just back up and you, you don't have this window. If you've done that, then like you're down here and this is your idle speed and you're basically just barely above the stall speed. But most people are at like 5% idle, you know, and they have plenty, if you actually look at where the motors stall, it's significantly lower than that. Why? Why don't we all just run the lowest idle speed that we possibly can, just, to, just barely enough to keep our motors from stalling? Well, it turns out that that has some disadvantages. Motors have much less torque the slower that they're spinning. And that means that if you've got your quadcopter set up with the absolute minimum idle speed, your motors can't speed up from that when they need to. And that can create bounce back or arm dipping on strong throttle moves. It's actually really beneficial to have the idle speed even just a little bit higher than the stall speed in order to improve motor responsiveness and stability at low throttle. An extreme example of this is, I, I know some, uh, if I remember right, when we did the tuning video, three pilots tune one quad for Rotor Riot, I think Vanover turns his idle speed up to like eight or nine percent, some really high number in order to improve low throttle stability. And that's the perfect application for dynamic idle. Because dynamic idle lets you define two different parameters. A target idle speed that is analogous to your current idle percent and a minimum so a stall speed, also known as min, idle min, that is the absolute slowest that the motors can be allowed to go before they stall. So in order to get dynamic idle working, you're gonna need two numbers. And the first one is the idle percent that you're already using. Just go look in the configuration tab and there it is. 
The other one that you're going to need is the RPM at which your motors stall. And let's take a look. I'll show you how to get that from the uh, from the motors tab in Betaflight. So I'm going to click on that slider. I'm going to raise it. And what RPM does the motor begin to spin smoothly? I guess I should just raise it up till it spins and then lower it till it stops spinning smoothly. So here we are at 1500 RPM, 1270, down key, down key, 485 RPM, 400 RPM, ooh, 250 RPM. I guess once it's going, it, there you go. So now it's twitching, 280. 300, 300, there we go. Let's say about 300 RPM is where that motor was spinning smoothly and not twitching. So I'm gonna do that for the other motors. Once you know what these two values are gonna be, you're gonna need to set them up in the Betaflight CLI. And if we just type get idle, we can see uh, the names of the relevant parameters. The first one is D shot idle value. And that is your normal digital idle percent, or now they're calling it motor idle throttle value. That's that value here in the in that tab. And that's potentially not even gonna change at all. So my D shot idle value is 550, and that corresponds to a value of 5.5%. 5.5%, 550, see how that works. The other value that we're gonna need to tweak is the idle min RPM. And that is set in a value of RPM divided by 100. So my idle min RPM of 12 corresponds to an RPM of 1200. And that's going to surprise some of you because earlier in the video, I showed you me testing this on the bench and coming up with a value of about 400 or 600 for most of my motors. The bench value is going to be way too low. I learned this through flight testing. You're going to want to set that significantly higher than the bench value. The Betaflight devs who worked on this give a suggested idle min RPM for most 5-inch quads of 14 my, I ended up at roughly double what my motors were on the bench. At the end of the day, you're going to go out and you're going to flight test it. And if you get death rolls, it needs to come up. That's the bottom line. So just in case you're new to the CLI, the way you would do that is you would type set idle underscore min. Oh, look at that. It's auto completing. Once it auto completes, you can just hit the tab key if you want to set idle min RPM equals 12 and then type the word save. There you go. Now that you've set these values on the bench, it's time to go fly and tweak them. And the first thing you want to do is do the sharpest flips and rolls you can. Just jam the stick and then recenter it as sharply as you can. Really, maybe leave the stick to fully deflect it and do a double or triple roll and then boom, center it as sharp as you can because you really want to test whether you're going to get a desync. And if you do get an arm dip or a death roll, you're going to need to raise the idle min parameter. The other thing you can do now is you can adjust the idle percent to tune your flight feel without worrying about the PID loop excessively spinning up the motors because dynamic idle lets the PID loop reduce the motors below the idle percent. And you can, if you want to, you can lower the, the idle percent without worrying that you're going to run into a desync because the idle min will protect you from desyncs. And what the people who have developed this tell me is that most people are actually going to want to raise their idle percent from what they had it at, which was confusing to me at first. Because the way I think about idle percent is that I want it as low as I can so I get maximum inverted hang time and so forth. But with dynamic idle, the PID loop can now lower the motor RPM lower than it could. You don't need to lower the idle percent to get the motors down or to prevent the motors from spooling up like they have been doing. Raising the idle percent a little bit will give more stability at low throttle and will give more responsiveness to the motors because they are not as far into that low torque, low RPM region. So most people actually are gonna to wanna to maybe raise that idle percent a little bit, but you can freely raise or lower it without worrying about desyncs once you have the idle min tuned. And that's it, that's dynamic idle. Well, there's more stuff we could talk about. And if you wanna hear more about it, you can go, I'll put a link to the Facebook post where I discussed a lot of this with these guys in great, great detail. And you can read that as well. Um, maybe I should show you some flights.
show you some flights with Dynamic Idle? I will. And in fact, th the flights are actually in my three packs a day playlist. I'm flying three packs a day of freestyle uh, for 30 days in a row to see if it makes my flying better. And I'll put a link to that playlist as well. There are some videos in that playlist where I was testing this out. But to be honest with you, I'll bet that many of you won't be able to tell. Except there is one video in the playlist where I had the dynamic idle threshold too low. And when I popped up and did a low throttle, zero throttle move, my quad kind of wobbled. And that was my sign that I needed to raise the idle min just a little bit. Um, the truth is that you're really going to notice this most as a pilot where you can adjust the idle speed to be higher or lower and give you that subtle difference in handling that you're looking for. Is it a night and day feature? You know, when people first told me about it, some people said, this is such an important feature. Nobody's paying attention to this. I got to tell you, the experience of flying the quad is not that different. But I think that being able to have the motors spin just a little bit faster and be just a little bit more stable, I do think there's people out there who are going to notice it. People like Alex Vanover, who normally turns his idle all the way up to 9% to keep the quad stable. Think about what's going on there. His motors bottom out at 9%, which means when he needs to do a rotation, the motors might be going way higher, up to like 20% maybe to do the rotation. If that's you, if you're already running like a ridiculously high idle percent, then I think you are the kind of person who is really going to benefit from this the most because that'll let your PID controller sort of oscillate around the idle instead of always just coming up on one side and never being able to go down on the other side. Anyway, that is it for this video. Now you know about dynamic idle and yeah, maybe you'll try it out. Maybe you'll turn it on. Maybe you'll be impressed with it like some people are. Um, if you have any questions about it, let me know down in the video description. I'll be happy to, or down in the comments. Damn it. It's just knee jerk to say that. Let me know down in the comments or you can always message me on Facebook. Uh, I try to answer all the questions that I get. Thank you so much for watching the video. That's going to do it. Happy flying.